What's up everyone and welcome to today's video. This episode will get you through the issues of This channel's regular broadcast is interrupted for a special coverage of the Magic, Iliana and Storm Limited series. Published by Marvel Comics in 1983 and 1984. In the previous episode we saw how Eliana became more and more versed in the arcane arts under the guidance of Belasco over the years, and her relationship with Cat became worse. Not only did she develop magical skills, but she found out that she was a mutant as well, just like her brother. Her mutant ability was to summon and control teleportation circles. She ran into a projection of Storm a couple of times, who tried to stop Eliana from wanting to go up against Belasco. When Belasco came for her she teleported away and ran into the new mutants, who seemed to know her, even though she had no idea who they were. She teleported several times again and ended up in the past, where she witnessed Storm's battle against Belasco back when she was in the prime. She won that battle, but lost her soul in the process, ending up under Belasco's control. This scared Ileana and she teleported away again, right into the hands of Sim, who wanted to punish her before he would take her to Belasco. She was able to get rid of Sim, and right before that, Storm had entered Belasco's citadel to come to Ileana's rescue. But Storm got attacked by Cat, who left her near death on the floor. Ileana then attacked Cat and killed her by breaking her neck. Belasco then told Storm and Ileana that they would now create a third bloodstone, and that after that they would strip Storm's soul from her body while she was still alive and conscious. The Conclusion to Magic, Storm and Ileana, Issue Number 4 Ileana Rasputin is holding a dying storm in her arms, with both Belasco and Sim standing over her. Cat attacks Storm on Belasco's command and she lethally wounded her, after which Ileana herself dealt with Cat and snapped her neck. Belasco then applauded Ileana's strength and her skill, but she just wishes she had slain him instead. Yet, she is glad that he is pleased with her. Belasco enjoys the fact that there is still a part of Ileana's soul remaining to be corrupted where she has not quite decided which to choose. Love and hate and the fine line between them. That is the dilemma that Ileana is currently facing. She begs Belasco to spare Storm and says that she will do anything, but Belasco tells Ileana that she will do that anyways, just to prove that she is bound more to him than to Storm. He tells her about the plans he has concerning both her and Storm. They will now create the third blood song for her medallion first and then use its power to strip Storm's soul from her while she's still alive, only to offer it in sacrifice to his dreadmasters, the Dark Ones, and he asks her if she likes that. A voice inside of her says yes, she does. Belasco tells Ileana to look at Storm's face as he hands her a knife. He tells her that the both of them have been tainted by his corruption, and that both their innocence and humanity are lost forever. He points out that Storm yearns for this as much as Ileana herself does, and that they must not disappoint her. Ileana tries to control her thoughts. In her mind, she already knows about the ritual which is about to unfold, and she tries desperately not to speak those words which are already in her mind. But she can't seem to stop them. To her surprise, there is a smile on Storm's face. A smile of understanding on her part, and a smile which helps Ileana to find the strength she needs. Ileana asks for forgiveness, and says that she wishes there was some other way. She holds the knife and plunges it right in Storm's throat, going against what Belasco had intended for her to do. The skies surrounding the citadel instantly tear apart. During Storm's lifetime in limbo, her control over the weather weakened over the years. Her body was simply no longer able to withstand the physical stress which came with wielding those immense mutant powers. But now, with Storm's death at the hands of Ileana, those powers are no longer being dampened. As a matter of fact, it seems as if this is Storm's last try, doing her utmost by becoming truly one with the lightning, to utterly destroy Blasco and all his works. His tower is being shattered, and his monsters are being crushed, but sadly, as usual, Blasco is staying unharmed and he is furious with Ileana. He curses her and shouts out that he has endured her defiance and rebellion for the last time. He tells her that she had power beyond comprehension, within her grasp, but now she will know nothing but misery and pain, from now until the end of time. And no one will be able to protect her or to save her. 
He says that she can run all she wants and hide as best as she can, but she will not be able to escape his wrath. As he threatens her, Eliana uses her mutant power to summon a light circle, and she teleports Storm's body and herself out of there. Back to the only true safe place Eliana knows in Limbo, namely Storm's secret garden which she had been keeping safe from Belasco's corruption. While she's making a grave for Storm's body, Eliana thinks back to how she got here, and how the X-Men followed her to Limbo to try and rescue her all those years ago. How they then became separated, and how she got stuck here without them, and how she would later run into an alternate version of the same X-Men. In that timeline, those X-Men were able to rescue their Eliana, while they themselves got stuck in Limbo instead. One by one Belasco had hunted them down and twisted their souls, until they were remade in his image, with Storm and Cat being the last two of them. Storm and Cat had been able to stay out of Belasco's grip, but he did manage to possess Storm. In the end she was able to steal her soul and free them back, and by doing so she became his greatest enemy in this dimension. But in the end, it didn't do her any good at all. As she's crying and mourning the loss of Storm, she notices that the garden is changing as she's standing there. There's a bitter cold wind, and all of Storm's trees and flowers are rotting right before her very eyes. Ileana then realizes that it makes sense. Since this is a magic place, and now, without Storm being here to use her powers to shield the place from Belasco's evil influence, this oasis of beauty and life is starting to warp, and becomes as desolate as the rest of this dimension of Limbo. And Belasco will do the same to Ileana if he gets his chance. She notices an urge inside of her, making her wanting to run back to Belasco to beg him for forgiveness. She feels that she is ready to pay any price, as long as he will take her back and love her as he had before. She now realizes how alone and how afraid she feels. As she is lost in thoughts, a hand starts clawing its way out of the grave she had just made for Storm. It is actually Storm's rotting corpse and it starts addressing her. It tells Ileana that she should have thought of this sooner, because some transgressions cannot be forgiven, as it tries to grab hold of her. It tells Ileana that since she has taken her life from her, and her moment of transfiguration and glory among the Dark Ones, it is only fitting that she returns the compliment. Shocked and disgusted with what she's seeing, Ileana decides to flee, because she can't fight or face this. She teleports out of there and ends up somewhere else. Ileana isn't entirely sure if this was truly Storm's corpse, or maybe some magic tricks being played on her by Belasco. She does not want to think about Storm in this way, and only wants to think of her as she has come to know her. Strong, gentle and kind. At that exact moment something comes barging through the wall, telling her that those are things she herself is not. It's her brother Colossus, who tells her that they all died for her, that they were all damned for her, and he tells her that those scales must be balanced, as he tries to grab her. As hard as it was on Ileana to see an exhumed and zombified version of Storm, seeing her brother like this is infinitely worse, and she just teleports away once again, with no idea where she will end up this time around. All Ileana knows is that her light circles move through both space and time, but none of the normal rules apply in Limbo, and that she wants to be as far away from this nightmare as possible and she gets what she wished for, but she cannot believe her eyes. Ileana has arrived back home again. Back home in Siberia, Russia. She now realizes how foolishly short-sighted she had been. It had never even entered her mind that her light circles could teleport her from limbo to earth. Somehow she instinctively senses that this place she ended up at is earth and not another one of Belasco's mind tricks. She could have just escaped at any given moment and she didn't even know it. She runs towards the house she grew up in and joyfully yells out to her mother, who is standing at the door opening, that it's her. Her mother asks her husband Nikolai, who is still inside the house, if you heard what this girl said, that she is their daughter. Ileana just hugs her mother, telling her that she's glad she's home while she compliments her. She tells her mother that she looks wonderful, and she says that she feared that she would never see them again, 
Ileana then asks how her father is doing, but her mother doesn't answer. She asks what the meaning of this is, and why she is playing such a cruel joke on her. Her father then joins them, and asks what the commotion is all about. Ileana is happy to see him and tells him it's her, but he says that that's impossible. There Ileana is a baby, and this girl in front of them is a young woman, almost fully grown. They tell her to stop speaking this nonsense, and to go home to her real parents. They say that no decent child would walk around in the kind of costume that she's wearing, and ask her if she's some runaway wolf girl from the circus or something. Her father then tells Ileana to leave them, that she's not welcome here, and they close the door on her. Ileana then drops to her knees, realizing that she can't go home ever again, not really. To her parents, she is only six years old and living with her brother in America, but for Ileana, those days are almost half her lifetime ago. She has no idea how she can tell her parents that their beloved snowflake has become both a mutant and an apprentice sorceress, something which she can hardly come to terms with herself. She then gets stepped on her shoulder by the deceased Storm who tells her that that is the least of her troubles. And it's not just Storm who's standing behind her, but her full team of X-Men who are all dead and zombified as well. And Ileana just faints. But she then gets slapped in the face by Belasco as Colossus is holding her, and he tells her that he thought she was made of sterner stuff. She opens her eyes just like Belasco wants, because, like he tells her, there is no amusement in punishing someone who can't feel it. She greets him and finds herself back in limbo. Belasco tells her that she is far too calm considering what's in store for her. He tells Colossus to stretch her arms out some more while holding her in the air. Belasco wants to hear Ileana scream. And she does. She screams until her throat cracks. And Belasco is loving every minute of it. Eventually he tells her that this moment could have been as pleasurable for her as it is for him, and he starts casting his magic on her. Ileana thought she had been hurt before, but Belasco teaches her that she does not know the meaning of the word hurt. She wants to fight what Belasco is doing to her, but she just as much wants to give in to it as well. There's a part inside of Ileana that will always answer his call, that simply wants the demonic power he offers. With each bloodstone ceremony, that part inside of her grows more and more, and this ceremony marks the creation of the third bloodstone. Only two more to go, before Eliana becomes the Aldrich Gate through which Belasco's gods will enter their dimension, to seize it as their own. Belasco then grabs the medallion around Eliana's neck and pulls Eliana towards him, telling her that she must be taught a lesson. He tells her that she must learn, just like her precious X-Men have, who the master of limbo is. He tells her that he will now leave her behind, in the wilderness, to fend for herself and his spells will deny her the use of the teleportation circles, prohibiting her to use them for her escape. She may starve in the meantime, or be wrecked by loathsome plagues, or ravaged by wild beasts, but she will not die. And when Belasco has need for her, a summons will bring her to his side. He then rips the medallion from her neck and tells her that he will take whatever he pleases, and there's nothing she can do about it. Belasco then leaves, and he tells her that, eventually, she will not want to prevent it, and perhaps then, if she asks nicely, he may forgive her. As Belasco leaves, so do the enchantments on the corpses of the X-Men. With him being gone, their bodies simply crumble to dust, and Ileana passes out. When she wakes up again, her tears are frozen to her face. Limbo's wilderness is now covered with snow and freezing winds. Ileana tries to move, but all she really wants to do is sleep. In her mind, she then imagines her future. A frozen scarecrow of ice, little more than skin and bones, but still alive because of Belasco's spell on her, and so hungry that she would eat her own flesh. But Belasco has made a mistake. He forgot how stubborn Ileana is. As she makes her way through the wilderness, trying to find protection from the blizzard, she runs into a storm shelter, but is totally wrecked. And then, 
a sudden gust of wind slams her into the huge tree which was the centerpiece of Storm's garden. This tree was grown from an acorn, which Storm had successfully created with the first spell right after she escaped from Blasco's enchantment. After that, it had grown for years, nurtured by Storm, pure, simple and untouched by Limbo's primal corruption. Ileana can tell that Storm's magic still flows through it. Belasco could not sweep it away as easily as he has everything else. This tree must die naturally, worn down by the same elements which once nurtured it. The tree is so huge that Ileana can use it as shelter for the blizzard. But the question is, for how long? She wonders if she will be able to draw sustenance from the oak's natural force. Having been both Belasco as well as Storm's apprentice, she uses her magic skills to extend her awareness. Just like Storm had taught her, becoming one with the ancient tree but not tampering with its essence. She's fighting the urge inside of her to manipulate the tree into something it is not. She casts a pentagram of silver fire around both her and the tree, and she starts to shake from both exhaustion and fear. She can feel Belasco's corruption inside of her and is stronger than she had thought. She is determined to follow Storm's lead, and she takes a portion of her own life essence, manifests it as pure energy, and combines it with the natural elements around her. She once again creates an acorn from it. Her first try at this resulted in an acorn which looked perfect on the outside, but was rotten to the core. Just like Ileana herself is. And this one is sadly no different. It explodes again with the same foul darkness and Ileana slams to the ground. Days pass and nothing changes. There is no end to Ileana's predicament and she has lost track of time. She has grown about a head taller and she has become as hard as the wilderness around her. For as far as she can see, there is nothing but desolation around her. Nothing but ice and snow, with no living thing inside apart from the tree and herself. And she knows that soon the tree will be gone as well. Every single time that Ileana uses the tree's energies for sustenance or for spells, she knows that she shortens the tree's lifespan. And the end is getting close. Ileana can feel it coming. She remembers how beautiful and majestic the tree looked when she first laid eyes on it. She asked the tree for forgiveness. She never meant to bring doom and destruction to those she cares for. But it seems to be all she ever does. Ileana notices that the wind and snowfall have stopped. And she hopes that maybe this is an omen. And that perhaps she will be successful this time. She starts meditating again and draws on the oak's power. Which rushes through her like a flood. It's warm and comforting. And it makes her glow with strength and vitality. She starts her ritual again and conjures up another acorn, hoping that this time will be different from before. But the same thing happens, and she should have known better. It is no use. She can try all she wants, but she is simply not able to create life as Storm was able to. Eliana is convinced that Belasco's evil is too deeply ingrained inside of her. It is too much a part of her, and she will never be able to get rid of it. She leans back in hopelessness, and her weight makes a tree fall over. All the times Ileana has used its life force to try and create something from it, or to sustain herself with it, have taken their toll. The tree is dead. All for nothing, and she watches it crumble to dust. If Velasco could see her now, she knows he would laugh at her. Deep inside of her, she can actually hear his voice, mocking her triumphantly, and it's more than she can bear. Anger and rage come over her, and it lasts for a while. And finally, even though she doesn't realize it, she is overcome by madness. She thinks back to how Storm was able to become the woman she once was again. How she was able to reaffirm her beliefs, which she held dearer than life. Her master spell was creation, but Ileana is not Storm. She just wants vengeance. Where Storm created life for its own sake, 
Eliana saw to use it as a means to an end. She just wants to use the creation of life to utterly destroy her tormentor Belasco, and she wonders if the answer she's looking for lies in that. To not create a metaphorical weapon against Belasco, but a real one. She figures she has nothing to lose. She starts casting her own master spell, using the strength she has remaining inside of her, both her own and the strength she used from the tree. She then plunges her hand into the energy sphere she created, with images coming to her mind, images of a sword, and then it manifests right before her, right into her hand. This went easier than she expected. So easy she figures she could have probably done this ages ago. And she asks herself why she hadn't understood this sooner. If she had, the tree wouldn't have to suffer and die. She wouldn't have to have endured this exile in this freezing cold hell. Eliana can feel the power surging through her. From the moment she grabbed the sword, she felt invincible. She is now eager to face Belasco and all she wants is to see him die now. The spell he had cast is no longer there. It has been shattered by her newfound power surge. A light circle instantly forms beneath her and brings her to the one place where she will meet her destiny. Right into Belasco Citadel. Belasco himself is looking forward to the moment where he will become freed of his exile. He had been looking for his way out of his imprisonment in limbo for a long time. Originally he had become trapped here after a run-in with Gazar the Savage and his wife Shana the She-Devil of the Savage Lands. After he got banished here by the Elder Gods, he had planned on using Eliana as his way out of here. But his enchantments are currently manipulating an Atlantean android named Dirk, and all he needs now for his plans to come to fruition is to restore the comatose Queen Liana of Lemuria to a semblance of health. But if it's up to Eliana, it will not come to that. She enters the study, yelling out for him, armed with the sword and asking if he remembers her. But Belasco says that she is nothing more than a nuisance who will get dealt with as she deserves. He immediately attacks her, but Eliana's sword is able to deflect most of his magic attack, and her own magic takes care of the rest. Belasco does not seem faced by Eliana's skills. He draws his own sword and attacks her. Physically, Eliana is no match for Belasco. He is taller, stronger and has a lot more reach than she does. She is only a teenager, where he is an adult man. But her light circles give her the edge she needs. She can move to wherever she wants in the blink of an eye. This does surprise Belasco, since he was still under the impression that he had neutralized this mutant ability of hers with a spell. Eliana tells him that he is apparently wrong about that, as well as many other things. But he tells her that she is deluding herself, and that they will not cross swords again as he calls for his henchman Sim, who rushes in and mocks Eliana. But Eliana simply strikes him across his chest with a sword, and he is in immediate pain, starts to bleed, and falls to the floor. Eliana tells Sim that this is revenge for what he did to her brother. Sim's defeat excites Eliana more than words could say. Not only has he been her living nightmare ever since she arrived in limbo, punished and tortured her, killed her brother, but also, more importantly, his defeat shows an emotion on Belasco's face she has never seen before, namely fear. Belasco is now starting to realize how strong Eliana has become, and he hides behind his desk. But Eliana simply destroys it, and all of Belasco's books on it, with a sword. Her sword's energies reduces them all to ash instantly. This infuriates Belasco, and he asks her if she has any idea what she has done. Centuries of magical knowledge is now lost forever. Eliana tells him that they were evil and had no more right to exist than he himself does. Moreover, what Belasco doesn't know is that over the years, under his tutelage, Eliana has read every single book in his library. All that knowledge isn't lost at all. It has simply been transferred from one demon mage to another. Eliana's features, as well as Belasco, start to change. Eliana is becoming more demonic looking and Belasco is reverting back to his human form. He notices how Eliana is growing fangs and horns on her forehead, while his are fading away, along with much of his arcane powers. With this change, the fight is no longer an equal one. Not by a long shot. Belasco is doing his best to stay alive, but he has no chance in beating Eliana in this state. 
He is starting to look terrified, and Liliana almost starts feeling sorry for him. Almost. Belasco sees that Eliana now even has a tail, and that her skin is turning as red as his used to be. Eliana then mocks him, and asks him why he doesn't call in his dark masters for aid, saying that they surely would not abandon the one who has served them so well over the years. She asks him if it could be that they don't like him anymore, or that they simply like her better. Eliana then remembers how Storm burned Belasco to a crisp in their fight, but back then, he wasn't really dead, it was simply a deception. His way to strip her of the last parts of her innocence. Eliana knows that this time will be different. This time, his death will be real and forever. She raises her sword as she has her tail wrapped around his neck. She doesn't care about losing her innocence, since she has none left. Or so she thinks. It is only now, during that moment of clarity, that she realizes both her hands are holding the sword, and that Belasco is being held by her tail. A tail. And she has horns on her forehead, just like he used to have. She has become just like him, just like Storm had done before. Voices inside of her ask her, so what? Belasco's death is important now. She has to kill him while she has that chance. This is what she came here for. This is what she wants. She has to kill him. Eliana starts to wonder if Storm heard those same voices, years ago when she was about to deal the final blow to him. She wonders if she's standing on the brink of the same abyss Storm had been. The demonic voices inside of her tell her to strike. They are crying for it. They are calling her to become one with them forever. But she turns away. She won't do it. She can't. And Belasco calls her a fool. Eliana's inner struggle ended with her uttering the word no as an answer to the voice's cries. The voices fall silent and she feels oddly at peace. She has the capacity and power to kill, but she no longer has the desire to do so. The sword she holds, her soul sword, has been forged from the twin fires of grief and rage that had been running rampant inside of her. The violence of those emotions overwhelmed her with an insane bloodlust, sending her down the same path Storm followed to her damnation. Belasco is confused. He asks her if she truly renounces her heritage, but Eliana tells him that no, she embraces it rather. He tells her that absolute power was within her grasp, but she says that the price was too high. He then calls her a pitiful, pathetic weakling. Eliana tells him to not get cocky, that he is simply only still alive because she spared him. They both know that in fair combat, his dark child beat him. This has proved her place as Belasco's replacement. Her act of mercy, or cowardice in Belasco's eyes, proved how much of a child she still is. And he throws a medallion with the three bloodstones towards her, telling her that this battle is not over. He disappears, but not before he tells her that the day will come where she will curse this day. On the day when he will deliver her precious planet into the embrace of his dread masters. Ileana did not expect him to leave. She thought she had stripped him of his magical powers. She apparently still has a lot to learn, but not now. For now she reverts to her human self. She has won, but she does not feel like cheering. She stands on the altar outside of Belasco Citadel, thinking about how easy her life was when she didn't know as much as she does now. And the more she learns, the more she finds out how little she knows and she realizes how dangerous that little knowledge can be. It's a dangerous game she's playing. She has no idea where this road she's on is going to, or what dangers will present themselves, but she's traveling with an extremely fast pace. Her new soul sword is the purest of energies, quintessential magical power, focused, unblemished and untainted through her soul. But it is still a weapon, birthed from creation, but its purpose is destruction. Much like she herself, actually. Shaped and tempered by two opposing forces, both Storm and Belasco. If she stays in limbo, she will be safe. She could heal the wounds Belasco inflicted on it and make all of it as lovely as Storm's garden. If she returns to Earth, 
it will mean she will have to face Belasco sooner or later. She looks at her medallion and has no idea who will win the rematch between them. The bloodstones in the medallion are parts of herself. Parts which are consecrated to evil. A bond she can never break. And that is the reason why Belasco left the medallion behind with her. To remind her that she is more like him than Storm was. She doesn't want to leave Limbo but she doesn't dare to stay here either. It has been 7 years since she arrived here. For her. For the X-Men on Earth it has probably barely been seconds. She summons the stepping disc and teleports out of Limbo. She knows that her appearance back on Earth will be quite a surprise. She gets grabbed and pulled back by Kitty, with the help of Wolverine and Colossus. And she's finally back home, on Magneto's former base on Earth with the X-Men she knew. And she used her powers to dress for the occasion. All this happened one year ago. And eventually she returned home to New York with the X-Men, to Xavier's school for gifted youngsters. There is no use going back to Siberia for her. She had already been back to her parents, but they told her that she is not welcome there, not believing that she is actually their daughter. For a while she tries to put her past behind her, but she cannot deny who she is and how she become the person she now is. She has gifts. And like all gifts, magical or mutant ones, they can be used for both good and evil. The choice is hers on how she uses her gifts, as is her responsibility. Friends she loved cared enough for her to risk and lose their lives in her defense. She now aims to be worthy of their sacrifice. In her heart, she will remember her friends as they were in the beginning. Free, whole and full of joy. Untouched by Belasco. She sheds a tear and knows that their bodies may be gone, but as long as their spirits shine brightly in her memory, they will never truly die. She will never be alone. And she then notices that it's snowing. She does not feel the cold. She has endured far worse in limbo than the winter in New York. She can handle the wind as well. It is simply nature's normal order of things and not some madman's whim. As she walks back to the mansion, she can hear laughter coming from the yard. It's the members of the New Mutants team who are playing in the snow. They got out of class a little early to be able to enjoy the snow. Ileana figures that Professor Xavier actually does have a heart, but he just likes to keep it hidden. These kids are mostly Ileana's age. Her physical age. Her mind has enjoyed things which make it twice that age. And her soul feels even older. She sometimes wonders what she would be like if she had lived a normal and ordinary life. She has been through so much that she feels like she has been torn in many pieces. She doesn't know which is the real her and she doubts she ever will. But there's nothing she can do about this, regardless of how much she wishes she could. All she can do is try her best with what she has, but in the end that can be said about anyone. And the ending of one story can be the beginning of the next one. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. You can help growing this channel by liking, subscribing and sharing. This tells YouTube that the videos I'm making should be recommended to others and would be very much appreciated. See you next episode.